I'm going to show you how much work it takes to produce a comedy show. This includes reaching out to venues, getting rejected again and again and again. I'm going to do whatever it takes to make this show successful, including embarrassing myself, <laughs> outworking everyone else, and even interrupting the show to make it better. What the fuck? <laughs> this is my first time producing by myself, so I'm going to be making mistakes and learning throughout the process. I can't wait for you to see how the show turns out. The way most comedians reach out to venues is by visiting them in person and asking to see a manager or calling them on the phone. Well, my goal is usually to like uh, uh, do some. Uh... That approach terrifies me. Some people have great salesmanship and charm. I do not. But what I do have is pretty good writing skills. It's time to put these skills to the test to get a comedy show. The first step in writing is to know your audience. In my case, it's venue owners and managers. The second step is to find out what they want. It's to make money. They want to make a lot of money. My job as the writer is to explain to them how I'm going to do that. Here's the letter I wrote. Looks good, right? Here's the problem with this letter. I just wrote it by myself. I should have asked other people who have way more experience than me what I should say in the letter. I know a lot of people with lots of experience doing this who would give me great advice. It didn't even cross my mind to contact them. Now that I have my email, I need venues and email addresses to send this out. The two types of places I targeted were bars and breweries. So what I did is I googled bars near town name and breweries near town name. And then I searched the internet for those bars and breweries email address or contact form. And I compiled it all onto a spreadsheet. Then I sent out about 75 different emails to various people, and I got no responses. Aside from a few return to sender, mailer demons, and one no, no one was interested. I didn't do anything for a month and a half because I was waiting for people to respond to me. And when they didn't, it didn't feel good. I felt like a failure. I was expecting a very low response rate. I wasn't expecting for no one to be interested. And it was at this moment that I realized I needed to ask for help. Hey, uh, hey, hey. There you are. <laughs> this is Mark Stoudemire, an experienced booker in the Philadelphia area. He's been very supportive of me and a good friend. Here I am on one of his shows. I wanted to get his advice on my letter. <laughs> I mean, this is a good, great cover letter if you were to apply for a job at, you know, Ernst & Young or something like that. <laughs> you know, you're, you're mostly dealing with people like general managers of bars. Think about how many emails these, these, these general managers get, but, you know, what can you do to sell them on the fact that it's a good idea to do comedy at their yeah. venue? Also, they care about two things. They care about their booze sales and they care about butts and seats. <laughs> and they don't care who could do it for them. They want the least hassle. They want the they want the least resist path of resistance in order to get both this in there, whether it's a comedy show or dueling pianos. You will send out something to about 20 different venues and maybe hear back from two or three of them. I would be as short and to the point as humanly possible. They're not going to read more past the fourth line. Hey, I'm going to make this as easy as possible for you, and you're going to make the most amount of money is what Correct. they want to hear. Exactly. What do you think about my inclusion of my picture in the email? <laughs> <laughs> Here is the second letter I wrote based on Mark's advice. I'm no longer a comedian. I'm now an event organizer. Less about me, more about the comedy show, and how I can assuage any of their fears. I didn't make it as short as he suggested because, well, I wanted to put everything in the pitch. I sent it out. And guess what? I got some no's. I got some undeliverables. But also, I got some people who were interested. Now comes the hard part. I need to convince these people to put the show on their calendar and pay me money for it. Most of the interested venues would ghost me after one email, or worse, lead me on for months and months until finally turning me down. At this point, I have no confidence or self-esteem. 
I wanted to do a show badly. I'm having no success. I'm desperate. This leads me to pursue crappy situations that allow venues to string me along for much longer than was good for my stress levels or mental health. This place had me call back every month for several months until they eventually turned me down. Listen to my useless and desperate attempts to make the show happen. Right now, you're like 150 bucks for our entertainment. I mean, I could do a show for 150 bucks. Right. Is your all your product clean or? Uh, it, it can be, uh, it, if that's what you want. I, I don't know, I just, I don't know if this is the right time of year or not for something like this. Usually the fall is a good time, but it, it might not be good for you. Uh, yeah, with, uh, with everything we're doing, remodeling, because we, our patio is closed and we're limited in our inside. Okay, I, I understand. So, uh, let me see. All right, thank you. There was at least two other phone calls like this. One place had me drive an hour and a half out of my way to meet with the owner, only for them to suggest that I bring 40 of my own people. They would do no work in promoting it, and I wouldn't get paid. It just didn't make sense. One place even lied to me, not before having me call them every month for several months, only to eventually tell me no, because in their words, someone else had approached them about doing a comedy show, and they told them no, so to be fair, they had to tell me no. But then I find out on the internet that they actually told this person yes, and this person offered a much better show than I could offer, which was fine. But why did you need to lie to me? Fuck you! Yeah, fuck you! But with all these failures, eventually I'd have to succeed. And whereas failure dragged on forever and wasted so much of my time, success is often quick and simple. Two responses from me, and boom! We have a show, as simple as that. Here is me being super excited secretly at work when I first read the email. Then, I had to quiet down and do my work for the rest of the day. Yeah, this looks great. Yeah, let's do it. The first thing I did was buy a PA system. If I'm going to be producing a lot of shows, this is an investment that's really going to pay off. The venue mentioned that if the show is successful, they want to do this on a regular basis. Part of achieving success is making sure the show is properly promoted. I paid my friend to create a professional poster template, which I can use for this show and future shows down the line. Then I joined all of the relevant local Facebook groups and posted at appropriate times about the show. I also provided the venue with all the promotional material, which they shared on their social media, as well as their mailing list. And I also asked all the comedians to post about it as well. That was the extent to which I went to promote this show. The show went amazing. The bar was packed. Unfortunately, I don't have any photos or video from the show because the venue asked that I don't do that, which I respected. The only video I have is this Instagram video by one of the comedians of all of us dancing before the start of the show. Don't get me wrong, stress engulfed my body the whole time of the show. I got there five hours early because I was too afraid of getting there late, so I had to sit in my car as unsuspiciously as possible until it was an appropriate amount of time for me to go into the venue and start setting up. The only issue during the show was the sound. I had to bear hug one of the speakers and drag it halfway across the room in the most distracting way possible while a comedian was on stage. Why is James just doing hardware rearranging in the middle of my fucking set? But that did fix the sound problem. The rest of the show went like a dream. The audience was great. The comedian said they enjoyed it. The venue considered it a success and wants to book us again. But most importantly, we got paid. What is this? Oh my god, they're giving me... My check is there. A W-9? A W-9 means you have to pay taxes on your earnings. Bleh. No one ever told me you had to pay taxes in comedy. 